Alright guys, um, I was able to pick up a little kid's kayak for pretty cheap. Um, it has some little damage on here and uh, I thought it would make a, a good uh, base to um, show you guys how I made my wading rig. Uh, well, it's more like a gig slash wading rig. But um, first things first is I'm going to take this off and do a proper plastic weld on there. Um, this will look a little bit better, um, but uh, I guess if you guys want to make one of your own, um, this will be the perfect video for you guys. After removing that, um, that repair job the previous owner did, uh, I want to go ahead and cut out a hatch hole. Uh, this serves two purposes. Uh, maybe if I can get my hands in and put in some plugs here and some other stuff. I'll show you that later in the video when I'm doing this. Um, also, another reason why I want to cut out the hole is so I can scavenge some of the plastic to repair the, the hole in the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So now that the hole is marked, uh, I'm gonna wanna cut out, cut out the circle, but I wanna make it a little bit bigger because as I do the inside of the circle, uh, I need it to fit on the outside, so this is about a quarter inch, so I'm gonna uh, make a little bit of a over that here. So now that the hole is cut out for the uh cover. Uh, we're just going to put this to the side. We don't want to install it yet, just yet. So what I want to do is beat this area up, kind of flatten it out some so it'll be more even. Um, I kind of a general shape. Um, it's a little bit over size, but you kind of want it to be a little bit too big. You don't want to be just right. Because you know it's easier to take some off than to add to add more to it. Uh, so once we get this heated up, flattened out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Catching up this hole in the kayak and making another wading rig like this. Man, I saw that big flounder you caught. That's <laughs> it, buddy. Yeah, there's a hole right there. So I cut out a piece of the kayak. It's got to get real hot, so when you stick it on, it kind of fuses together. There's a, I've seen this plastic welding kit. Yeah. The, well, the scene gets really hot. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny has one, but there's no uh, plastic stick. None no of the rubber sticks. So, yeah. Like, yeah. I was going to. I need to cut from dragging? Yeah, I guess whoever had it before dragged it. Yeah. I mean, this is a lot. Right, this thing is perfect. Really
see um, it's pretty much on there pretty good it's not gonna come off uh, the reason why you want to heat up both the contact and the replacement piece is um, you want to get it so hot to where it's almost melting and then um, once you place it on there they will instinctively want to bond together and then um, from there they'll just kind of stick together really well because they're on the surface they're kind of melted on both ends and then uh, from there you know you just use like I'm using kind of welder welder and a little spoon to push it around to kind of blend the plastic into the kayak and then I kept and use the heat gun to keep things warm because you know you don't want it to cool down you want it to cool down you want the, the temperatures to be pretty hot to where it's still malleable and um, just keep pushing it in and and um, making sure that it kind of bonds together well once it's done it, it's not going to come off um, and uh, <clears throat> and it won't leak anymore the um, you can kind of you could kind of sand it a little bit if you want it to be a little bit smoother, but um, I'll probably just leave it like this. You know, there's really no need. It when you drag it, it's gonna scrape it right here anyway. Um, but after it cools down, it should be nice and hard again, and um, that's pretty, that should be good enough. So the next thing I want to put is the rod holder, and it'll go over here, um, and. Um, you remember from my rig, the rod holder is right here too, and it kind of has a post, and, uh, and it has a space for the cooler up front. So that's what I'm going to do now, is going to go ahead and start putting the rod holder together. So the first thing you're gonna need are these right here. I'm using three quarter inch pipe. So what these do is they screw into here. Um, this, this kayak already has two holes on the top. I'm going to go ahead and use those holes so that way I just don't have a bunch of extra holes on the kayak. And um, I'm gonna drill it out to match this, put this in there and screw this down. I have a bunch of scrap pieces left over from my previous project, so uh, I'm going to try to use as much of it as possible. Uh, basically, what I'm doing here is this piece will slide into this. And then what these are 45 degree elbows so it'll kind of create that uh, angle that I need um, we don't want to glue anything just yet so we want to stick everything together first make sure everything's lined up cut it to the size that we need and then from there we'll uh, make sure everything is welded together and or not welded together but glued together and stick together.
You don't, you don't actually need an entire bag of 45 degree elbows, but uh, at the Home Depot I was at, they only had the, uh, the bag, they didn't sell them individually. So, um, at minimum you only need four of these. Hey! You lost! Hey! Stupid, stupid rat dogs. The, uh... You probably need an entire bag of these, so, uh, maybe even more. Uh, I didn't actually make sure to count it out, but I guess we'll see. And you know, before you put down the screw the holes or drill the holes for these, for the front post, uh, when you mark your holes, you want to make sure that you can actually reach it with the hole that you have. Um, if you put it too far forward and you can't reach it, then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having that hole there to begin with. And um, so, you know, again, make sure you can actually reach the hole before you uh, mark it and drill it. Each one of these pieces, each one of these pieces are about two inches in length, um, maybe just a little bit under. It's like one and uh, three quarters of an inch. And uh, basically, this is just the sit inside to help it seat properly. Um, you kind of don't really want it exposed because you want to, you want the two, you want this piece to actually meet the elbow and sit flush a little bit. Um, these pieces right here came out to about 10 inches long um, between here and here. Uh, and generally you want at least an inch on each side for the fitting. Uh, but this will be different for your kayak, so you can't really use the exact same measurements as I did. Um, you can probably use it as a general measurement, but it'll be different for every kayak. It just depends on how, how you set it up, where you put the holes, or the post and uh, what size kayak you have. This is just a six foot kayak. So the gap between there is 
about eight and a half inches. So what I'm because I want an inch of um, of overlap for each side. That means that uh, I'm gonna have to do at least eight and a half an inch on each side. So I'm gonna have to do at least a ten and a half cut. Set the angles that way. I want to make it sit straight up some. So I'm gonna heat up the plastic or the PVC and try to bend it back straight. kind of see it's drained out some. Um, just remember whenever you're heating up the plastic or the PVC, uh, you wanna you don't want the flame to actually touch the um, PVC and you just want to kind of keep it moving so it doesn't actually burn the PVC either and eventually it'll get warm enough to where it'll flex and then you should be able to move into position and once it starts moving to that position just hold it there for a couple of minutes for it to and it'll cool back down and um, it'll keep that position and It'll never, uh, it'll never bend back from that position as long as, you know, you don't heat it up to the point of, the point of the PVC actually melting. And also, whenever you try to remember, whenever you're buying the PVC, make sure to buy the one with the thick wall. Um, there's two kinds. There's one of the wall is a little bit thinner, and then there's one where it's thicker. Um, for higher PSI. Um, you want to get the thick one because uh, you know, you're going to be using this as a handle too to grab things and you don't want it to break on you. Uh, and having this thick, thicker sidewall you know, will make it a lot more durable. I'm gonna make this one a little bit different from mine. On mine, I put the other elbow right here, or the other three way connector down here. And then I my hand, and put this right here. But I want, I kind of want to make these sit a little bit higher than the ones on the side. So that way, um, you can, so that way when the poles sit, in the uh, hole holders, it, it won't, uh, they won't line up. They won't be, the, ends, the very tops of them won't be next to each other. Um, basically what I'm hoping is, uh, by having them at different heights, they're more, they're less likely to tangle up. Um, or if you know, if you wanna put a net on one side and if you put your pole on the highest one, the um, any leader line that you have on the, on the pole won't hang far enough down to get tangled up in a net or something like that at least that's the hope um, I guess I'll experiment it put it on there and uh, we'll see
so you know since that was 11, 11 and 3 quarters you want to make another 11 and 3 quarters this will be the second round for this top part so you want the rail that rail to line up here and this rail line up here so that way you'll have a drill point for both of these gap is about two and three quarters uh, and then you know you want to add an inch for each side for it to slip in so you know two and three quarter two and three quarters and then you add an inch for each one so it comes out to four and three quarters uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a five inch cut just to give it a little bit more space um, just in case I need to adjust it up or down a little bit What I'm going to end up doing is replacing those two with one the disc. Uh, I couldn't find the other one. Uh, I thought about two of them, uh, or maybe I did buy two of them, but one fell out of the bag. And either way, I can't find the other one of these, so I'm gonna have to buy one more of these. But for now, I'm just gonna have those there. But I'm gonna replace those top two pieces with this one. Since I already have the one, I guess I could just show you how it looks. That's the end goal of how it works to look and uh So the next thing I'm going to be putting on are the wheels. Uh, one of the things I've learned from my first one is on um, mine, I have the wheels too narrow. So when you pull it with anything on there uh, or anything heavy on there, it naturally wants to tilt because you know the ground is uneven. Um, when it's on concrete, it's perfectly fine. But when I'm pulling it on the beach or on the dirt or on the grass, um, the general unevenness of the grass will make it shift side to side and want to tip over. So, something I want to improve on is to make this a little bit wider on that kayak. They're apart about the far apart um, on here. I'm probably going to want to come out like this, which I think would make them a lot more stable. Um, but, you know, I guess the challenge is figuring out how I'm going to do that without without over-engineering it, essentially, basically try to keep it simple and try not to over-engineer it. I bought these wheels off of eBay. They're like five bucks each. I don't know, you could probably find these at Home Depot or Harbor Freight, but um, if I remember right, they're a little bit cheaper if you just buy them off of eBay. Uh, you save like a couple of dollars. I mean, I guess, you know, you don't feel like saving the two or three dollars. You can just go buy them off the Harbor Freight. Um, but this is here. This actually kind of works out that it has this right here. Uh, this is supposed to be the inside, and this is the outside. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make this the outside. It doesn't look as pretty, but you know, it's okay, pretty. Um, so what I'm hoping is I can find an end cap that will slip onto here and I could just weld it in 
and what the goal would have to have a piece of end cap PC welded PVC welded onto each side like that It ended up working out. See? This is between the two wheels ended up being about 11 inches. I think that should be more than enough to keep it stable from falling from side to side. What this will do is it'll keep the um, I have two poles coming through here. Of course, this is all going to be plastic anyway. Maybe my only concern with that is, is if this is in shallow water, um, having it on the bottom, I think uh, would interfere with the way it floats. I mean, I guess it has the wheels on there, so it shouldn't matter. But you know, you don't want this digging into the sand or the mud or something like that and um, make it more difficult for you to pull because you know you don't want to actually tie the kayak to you you want to have it uh, like I normally have it where I have a wading belt and I have the little pin that shoves into the pocket uh, so you know last thing you want is a strong current to come by and this thing to, to pull you with the current or something like that you want it to or you know you want to be able to break it off if you have to without having to struggle too too much. Uh, but uh, before I actually finalize any kind of design or make any kind of design for this, I want to run to Home Depot and I want to make sure that I can find something to cover this kind of make it like an end cap on this uh, if I can it'll make life a whole lot easier I won't have to try to design some kind of cover or uh, like on that one I had to make a I essentially made a handle for the back to keep the wheels from moving from side to side but if I can find a little plastic end cap that fits over this um, that would be absolutely perfect look at that made in the USA Kind of surprising. I was out half expecting this to be made in China or something. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, since I'm gonna take this into Home Depot, I'm gonna mark it with, uh, I don't know, snag the rockfish. Uh, so that way um, they can't try to claim that I stole this or something, you know, it's like, sometimes you walk in there, it's hard for them to tell. Um, you know, all this stuff looks the same. I don't even know if they have this same exact one in Home Depot or not, but I'm just gonna mark it anyways, just so it'll make it to where they can't just say I, I stole it and took it off the shelf. There you go, snag the rockfish. By the time I get back from Home Depot, it's gonna be too dark for me to take anything. So odds are we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Unfortunately, it gets dark a lot sooner now. It's kind of throwing things off. It also makes it harder for me to do projects because uh, I have to do stuff in the morning and then.
by the time I'm done in the morning, I only have like a couple hours of sunlight left. But, um, but I guess we'll go in and uh, pick this up again tomorrow.